be posted on YouTube later, as well as in the project navigator for each of the different projects. Um, so if you know anyone that um, missed, the, missed the meeting or they um, had other things going on, then um, please share the recording with them. Um, I am going to be sharing my screen, um, so, but if you have any questions throughout, we have the presenters on. So we'll pause at the end of each project update um, for those questions. So feel free to either throw those in the chat or you can verbally share them, of course, after each project update. Um, the project updates are currently recorded, um, so they're not necessarily gonna be something where we encourage interjection just because it'll be a little bit hard for us to hear. Um, but I'll pause at the end of each one to get those questions. So let's go ahead and get started. And I think we're starting, yeah, with, oh wait. We're gonna be starting with Cinder. All right, here we go. Hello, welcome to the Cinder project overview and update. My name is Brian Rosmeda. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. I was the PTL for the Victoria release, and I'm serving as again as PTL for Cinder for the upcoming Wallaby release. So what does Cinder do? Well, it's the block storage service. So what we do is implement services and libraries that provide on-demand self-service access to block storage resources. And you can see in the diagram, the basic layout, we provide a REST API for clients to contact. There's a message bus, there's several different services that comprise Cinder. There's the scheduler and then the volume managers. Um, and so the long story short, we provide software to define block storage by abstraction and automation on top of various traditional backend block storage devices. So if you want a volume for your instance, Cinder is where you get it from. So what does the Cinder project do? Well, we produce software in a whole lot of repositories. So the Cinder repository is where the main Cinder code is stored. So that provides the REST API and then all the services that make the block storage service work. We also have a library called OS Brick, and that's what's used to actually attach volumes. So Nova uses it to attach volumes to any of your instances. Um, Cinder itself also uses Brick when it needs to attach a volume to perform some type of uh, service for it. We provide the Python Cinder client, which provides a Python, it provides Python bindings to the uh, REST API. We also provide the Python Brick Cinder client extension, which allows you to use OS Brick to do attachments, but via the command line for particular applications. We also provide the Cinder Tempest plugin and Cinderlib. All right, so what you're here for though, is you wanna know what's new in Victoria. Okay, so a few things. Microversion 3.61 adds the cluster name to the volume detail response if it's called in an administrative context. So regular end users don't see it, but administrators do, and that can be very helpful when you're troubleshooting. We've also got Microversion 3.62 that adds a default volume types API, and it allows management of a default volume type for any particular project. So this is a way operators, operators asked us for a way so that they can have particular projects use particular volume types that are either tied to a particular backend or a particular storage class or something like that. So this gives you an API by which you can do it. And we also have improved handling of the Cinder default volume type. Um, and this improved handling has been backported to Yasuri to 16.2.0 and to train 15.4.0 um, to keep the behavior consistent. So um, default volume types have been around for a while. In train, they were made mandatory in the sense that Cinder does not allow you to have untyped volumes anymore. Um, so you can consult the release notes to see in what way this handling has been improved, but trust me, it has. Also, we've got the Z standard algorithm compression support was added to the Cinder backup service. So the default is still deflate or what's known as Zlib, um, but now we also have this very popular modern technique of Z standard that can be used with the backup service. Also, a couple of new drivers were added. Dell added the PowerStore driver for iSCSI and Fiber Channel and Itachi 
added the HSBD driver for iSCSI and Fiber Channel. Then in addition to that, many volume drivers added features beyond the Cinder required features. So if you look at the Victoria release notes, you can see a list of uh, what's been added. Okay, and we addressed some security issues also. So there was OSSN 0086, Dell EMC, ScaleIO, or VX Flex OS backend credentials exposure. So that was fixed during the Victoria development cycle um, and then backported as far as Queens. Um, so the vulnerability did not occur in Victoria because it was fixed before Victoria was released, but we discovered it during the cycle and it's been backported. So that's something to be aware of if you use Dell EMC scale IO. Um, there's also OSSN 0085, Cinder configuration option can leak secret key from Ceph backend. It only applied to Ceph deployments that were using this particular RBD key ring comp option with Ceph. And that option has been removed in Victoria. So it was deprecated in Usuri and the OSSM was issued and then we removed it in Victoria. Okay, one other thing I just want to bring to your attention, there was an upgrade to Usuri issue that was discovered during the Victoria cycle, but it does not affect the Victoria release. But I want to bring it to your attention just so you're aware of it. Now, if you've already successfully upgraded from train to Usuri, then there's nothing to worry about because the problem that's caused would not allow you to upgrade. So if you're able to upgrade, you're fine. Um, and if you started with train, so if train was your first OpenStack installation, then you don't have to worry about anything either. But if you upgraded from Stein to train 15.3 or earlier, and you did not purge your Cinder database before the upgrade, um, not that you need to purge the Cinder database in general, it's just that it so happened if you didn't, you ran into this problem. So if that applies to you, you upgraded Stein to train 15.30 or earlier, and you didn't purge the database before the upgrade, then please read the release notes for Cinder 15.4.0 and for Cinder 16.2.0. So there's several ways that you can address this issue, um, but you need to read through the release notes and just decide what's the best way for your particular situation. Um, so just be aware your upgrade path from train to Usuri may require some actions in the train deployment before you do the upgrade. So I just want to make everyone aware of that. All right, so what's planned for Wallaby? Well, one major thing is we're going to remove version two of the block storage API. It was deprecated in Pike and version 3.0 is just like 2.0. Now, the difference, the difference, why would you use version 3.0 when you can use version 3.62? Um, that's entirely up to you. But if for some reason you have scripts or something and they're expecting the responses from the version 2 API, you can get something very much like those responses. Um, if you use, if you specify version 3.0 when you make your requests to the block storage API. So consult the block storage API reference documents for more information about that. But we will remove version two during this cycle. There are some new drivers that have been proposed. Um, OpenE, Jovian, DSS has already merged. So that's a new driver that's guaranteed to come. Cephi SCSI is um, most likely going to be delivered. It's very close. And then Kioxia Kumo Scale is going to be contributing a driver. It's kind of an interesting driver because it uses uh, NVMe OF, and they're going to make some updates to the um, OS Brick libraries handling of NVMe OF uh, to bring it up to date, and then also to support Kumo Scale. So that's going to be interesting. We're also going to be doing the consistent and secure policies initiative. Um, so not too much to say about that other than we will be consistent with other projects and the policies will be as secure as we can make them. And then there are going to be various internal improvements in Cinder. We have a whole list um, that we discussed at the Wallaby PTG, the uh, project teams gathering that was just held about a week and a half ago. Um, and if you're interested in seeing what these various internal projects are, you can go to the OpenStack Wiki and look for the Cinder Wallaby PTG summary 
and there's a list of everything we discussed and uh, what we plan to do. And if you want to contact the Cinder team, um, I've given you this tiny CC slash Cinder info. Um, it'll take you to our base contributors page, but it gives you a very nice um, listing of all the repositories the project con contributes to, and also our various means of communication and what our basic processes are. So it gives you a good idea of what the Cinder team is all about. All right, and get involved. There are some things that we would like you to do that we could use some help. Um, so for instance, the Cinder documentation could use an analysis by a good information architect, or even just an information architect, or even a high school student could probably do this. Basically, we have documentation that's been written by various people aimed at various audiences, and it's kind of interleaved, and we would like to um, separate out things that are aimed primarily at operators for running Cinder, operators for configuring Cinder, um, documents aimed at end users, and documents aimed at developers. Um, we have all those, and we have actually some pretty good documentation, um, but it's not always easy to find things because of the way it's organized. So we could do some help with somebody coming up with a nice plan for a good way to organize it. Also, it would be good to make your back-end vendors aware that you value Cinder third-party CI and their drivers. Um, it's not easy for the vendors to maintain the third-party CI, um, as we can see, because they're constantly going down and having to be fixed. Um, so it would be good if you let your back-end vendor know that you think it's important that there's the C their third-party CI is constantly running on Cinder changes, because it guarantees better quality code. Um, there's always a possibility to add tests to the Cinder Tempest plugin. If you're so inclined, you may have run into a scenario that would be good to be tested. We're always looking for that. And then there's an interesting article that I've uh, been telling people about. It was written in 2013, I think, uh, but it's still very relevant. And it's 10 ways to contribute to an open source project without writing code. So if you don't want to write code for tests, you don't want to write code for features, there's another, there are various other ways that you can contribute to open source projects like Cinder. And so I encourage you to check that out. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I'll be happy to take questions um, at the appropriate time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brian. And I see him in the, ch um, in the meeting. So is there, are there any questions for him about the Cinder features he discussed for Victoria as well as what's coming in Wallaby? Chat. Cool. Well, it looks like you put some communication places. So if you're either watching us after the community meeting or you do have questions later, um, feel free to get in contact with them. But now we're going to go on to the glance updates. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Abhishek Kikani, and uh, uh, I am working with Red Hat as a senior software engineer. I'm here uh, you to provide a project overview and update for Glass. I'm serving as a Glass PTL for last couple of cycles, and uh, will be continuing for Wallaby cycle as well. So basically, I am associated with Glance since Ice House, uh, mostly around six years, and was involved in uh, uh, import new import API. Then uh, some of the new features added to Glance, like hide old images. Uh, then. Uh, multiple stores uh, support support different kind of uh, stores multiple stores for plants then importing image to multiple stores copying image existing image to multiple stores etc so uh, in this session we are going to see what is glance and uh, what's currently going around glance and what are the planning for current follow cycle of plans. 
So, and in the end, uh, if uh, we have any questions, uh, then we'd like to answer that as well. So, let's start. So, basically, what does Glance do? Uh, Glance is the OpenStack image service. Glance provides services and associated libraries like Glance Store, browse, share, distribute, and manage bootable disk images. Other data closely with initializing compute resources and metadata definitions. So basically, Glance is one of the core project of the OpenStack. So as I said, as it is one of the core project of uh, OpenStack, it is founded during the Bexar release of OpenStack, which is the second release of OpenStack. Latest survey indicates that Glance is deployed in 95% of clouds in production or test phases. Uh, new features and enhancements for Victoria. So during Victoria, uh, actually uh, Glance now supports uh, multiple stores. So you can have different types of uh, stores like combination of different types of stores like RBD, then file, RBD plus file, etc. And uh, in Usuri, we have added features like uh, we can import images, single image into multiple stores at the time of creation, as well as we can copy existing image uh, into multiple, multiple stores. So for example, if we are using, uh, say, <coughs> a pre Usuri, version for example train and you want to upgrade your cloud to victoria then you can copy your existing image into multiple stores using that feature so in victoria we have uh, worked around uh, a little bit on fine-tuning that copy image feature where we are now allowing copying of unowned images by policy. So administrator can set this policy uh, in the policy.yaml or policy.json file to allow users to copy images which not belong to them. So enhancement in multiple source features, administrator can now set policy to allow user to copy images owned by other tenants. So if you, there is a detail spec uh, link given here. Then we have sparse image upload. Basically RBD and file system drivers now support sparse image upload. Means, sparse image upload means uh, it's ignoring null void sequences and upload only data itself at a given upset, resulting in uh, saving your storage. So uh, there is uh, one config parameter. Uh, if you enable that config parameter, then uh, you will enable this sparse image upload. You can find details, details in the given spec. Mixing Cinder driver compatible with multiple stores. So basically when we have added multiple store supports features, at that time uh, there was no provision for configuring multiple Cinder backends as a Glance store driver. So in this Victoria cycle, we have added this facility where uh, in Cinder, if you have different backends exposed using the volume types, you can configure a sing, uh, different store in Glance for each of the volume types. So now you can have uh, different Cinder drivers, multiple Cinder drivers in Glance as well. You can find those details in the given spec. So basically this is the features and enhancement uh, we have done for Victoria. Apart from that, uh, there are many bug fixes and uh, uh, some small features like uh, you can now set virtual sites to the image. Uh, uh, not you, a virtual size to the image can be set automatically at the time of creation. So basically this can be used by Nova and Cinder 
to avoid uh, running heavy operations like uh, KMU image info to calculate virtual size at their end. So this kind of features has been added to Victoria as well. So you can uh, uh, go through the Victoria release notes to find the detailed information about what uh, we have done in Victoria for a glance. This is this is just the basic highlights. Now we will go to possible features and enhancements for Wallaby. So this is what and this is what we are planning to do for glance in Wallaby uh, image encryption and decryption decryption. So user can upload encrypted images to glance. Basically, you can find more information in the given spec. <coughs> Glance cluster awareness. So this is again related to edge framework. In edge deployment uh, or uh, in uh, HA proxy deployment, uh, you will know how many Glance API nodes are running. So basically, the use of this is that uh, when you have multiple Glance API nodes running, and you are using glance direct import method to create the image then it is not guaranteed that your all calls of glance image image import will run through one api node only so it is possible that your create image call goes to nodes node a and staging call goes to node b and import call goes to node c and as data uh, of your image is on node B and import call is on node C, it will fail as it will not found the data to import into the backend. So to avoid this situation, uh, we are coming with glass cluster awareness where it will know that where exactly is your uh, data is and it will divert that import call to that particular node. So that is we are going to work then move cache under API. Currently, cache is uh, managed by admins and uh, with a different utility called as glance cache manage. So it is totally a different uh, client uh, based tool which we are planning to move under uh, API. So we are going to introduce a new V2 endpoint to handle cache related operations and uh, those uh, commands will be made available in glance python glance client as well <coughs> so basically existing glance cache manage tool will be deprecated and removed and uh, uh, it will be available under v2 api since Wallaby. apart from that uh, we are planning to complete uh, community goals to implement role-based access control system and uh, bug fixes uh, if any. Uh, apart from this, uh, you can find the various topics we have discussed uh, 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 at a given etherpad. So this is the PTG etherpad where you can find the discussion topic from the discussion as well as the recording of the session each session so kindly go through it and let us know if you have any questions yeah so basically that's it uh, from the current cycle point of view now uh, we definitely need your help we need more contributors, particularly if the features people want are going to be implemented. So, <coughs> at the moment, uh, basically, Glance team is uh, hardly of four to five contributors who uh, trying to implement these new features, and it is hard for us that if uh, there is any new feature comes in, then it is very difficult for us to manage so if you are interested and uh, if you are planning to add new feature then <coughs> sorry then kindly contact us and uh, we will be 
helping you uh, whatever uh, you need from us so if you want to contribute then there are lots of opportunities depending on your interest you can contribute in coding fixing bugs then reviewing code so review reviewing is also best part of the contribution improving documentation improving test coverage improving test test coverage etc so basically if you are interested uh, in contributing or if you are interested in glance then you can also uh, join glance weekly meeting which happens every thursday around 1400 utc at uh, openstack hyphen meeting irc channel so and uh, if you have any questions then you can talk to us on irc using openstack glance irc channel as well as you can uh, communicate with us on openstack discuss mailing list as well yeah that's it from this strategy update let me know if you have any questions uh, we will meet in the qa question and answer sessions after the presentation thank you have a good day So that was the glance update for the Victoria and Wallaby cycles. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat, but I did want to give anyone an opportunity to voice their questions now if they have any. Um, otherwise, we'll move on to Manila. Perfect. I also want to say we do have another project that came in just during um, that presentation. So we'll actually be doing a Nova preview at the very end as well. So we still have um, five more projects, but let's go ahead and transition to the Manila, Victoria, and Wallaby updates. My name is Gautam Pacharavi, and I'm the current PTL for the OpenStack Manila team. I'd like to give you a high-level overview of the project and give you an update about the things that we've accomplished in the recent Victoria release and our plans for Wallaby. So what is Manila? Manila is a service that seeks to provide OpenStack users the ability to provision and manage the life cycles of POSIX compliant shared and distributed file systems. It's inherently multi-tenant and secure. It is capable of providing hard network and data path isolation guarantees with the help of tenant dedicated share servers. Tenants from the get go can determine who has access to a shared file system, and this access can be revoked at any time in real time. Tenants can integrate their own authentication domains, so think Kerberos, Active Directory, or LDAP. Further, Tenant resources are scalable and elastic, so they can be growing and shrinking shared file systems instantaneously and easily. Manila supports several NAS protocols like NFS, FFS, SIFS, ClusterFS, HDFS, and so on, and it has drivers for over 35 storage systems or solutions. It can make intelligent placement decisions to ensure that you're making optimum use of your shared storage. Manila also provides a flexible model to expose storage system service catalogs to end users in a discoverable and programmable way. So let's preview a few things that the project team accomplished in the Victoria cycle. So we added support for share server migration. This is a two-phase design and administrators can use this feature to fa uh, facilitate cold and live migration of share servers and they can go for within storage pools or even across storage pools and backends. And this uh, feature has been implemented in the container and then adapt storage drivers and more drivers are to follow in the, in the next few releases. So the share replication uh, feature is, is now generally available. Uh, we've, we added this uh, feature as experimental uh, in the Mitaka cycle and over many cycles, we've actually com committed several improvements uh, and many of which um, are, are now being well tested and well used uh, over, the, over this time. So we no longer consider these APIs experimental. You don't need to include the experimental header uh, to have access to these APIs and you can use these APIs to plan your load balancing or disaster recovery strategies. 
we had several driver imp uh, feature improvements, um, including in the uh, con container driver, we added support for share migration, we added support for adaptive QoS and share server transfer limits in the NetApp driver. Uh, the Dell EMC in Unity driver now supports a new driver filter and snapshots are fully supported in the CephFS driver. Several client uh, enhancements were made as well. Uh, we continue to improve on our OSC integration. Uh, the OSC client now supports interacting with shares, snapshots, access rules, share types, coders, and resize. We we continue to play the catch-up game uh, and complete the parity there with the Python Manila client. We also added support for user messages in the UI, uh, so users can no, don't need to leave the UI in order to uh, triage asynchronous failures that can happen and that can be reattempted. Uh, and we made uh, several several improvements to testing and continuous integration through, throughout this cycle. And I think this reflects in the number of bug fixes that we committed during this cycle, uh, because we added new test cases to uh, several existing uh, file system protocols or file system management modes, like for example, the hard multi-tenancy mode and for uh, exclusively testing the admin admin interactions against various uh, shared backends and stuff. So we also made uh, many improvements in the Manila CSI land. Uh, although the release cycle is not coordinated with the rest of OpenStack, uh, it follows the uh, Kubernetes release cycle, uh, but, but what coincided with the Victoria cycle has been the introduction of new Helm charts, a new OpenShift operator, and support for uh, OpenStack availability zones, um, and also for shoving in any runtime configuration to make intelligent decisions uh, while mounting shares onto the uh, Kubernetes node plugins, and for also share metadata uh, to be added to tag the share, to tag the provision uh, resources and so on. So all of this uh, can also be used against older versions of OpenStack, uh, and that's that's the way that the driver has been implemented. Uh, so we just recently concluded our project technical gathering for the upcoming Wallaby cycle. And so we have a fair idea of the things we want to accomplish in the current release cycle. First off is Vert.io FS. This is a novel file system attachment protocol that's been developed within the Linux kernel, and it's aimed at virtual machines. So now that there is sufficient mainstream adoption for the kernel, it's time to integrate that into OpenStack. And so with this release, we play, we aim to provide file system attachments to Nova VMs. And with the help of Nova APIs, you could do what you could be doing with block devices today. So let's say we can you can execute OpenStack server FS attach or detach and expect Nova to interact with Manila to gather all of the attachment info, arbitrate the security and the access rules and so on, mount the file system via the host kernel, make it available to the guest virtual machine. So this should greatly enhance the user experience for Manila and Nova users of shared file systems. And it also provides a uh, more secure way of accessing um, shared, shared file system drivers in Manila that do not support the hard multi-tenancy guarantees, um, the, the network path multi-tenancy guarantees that some of them do. So uh, we're also looking to enhance support for the CephFS drivers. Uh, in the upcoming cycle, we will be adding support for en enhanced snapshot cloning, something that Ceph is backporting to the Ceph Nautilus release upstream. And we're also support, uh, adding support for the upcoming releases of Ceph, Ceph such as uh, Ceph Octopus and Ceph Pacific. Uh, we will also be making several RBAC and security improvements. We'll be supporting the reader uh, user admin role as well as refreshing policies to support um, the user scope uh, feature that's been added to Keystone in the in the past several cycles. We're also planning to drop the use of root wrap and provide a more um, secure and and flexible um, you know uh, way of privilege escalation via a Oslo prefs app in this cycle. We also plan to enhance security services to be mutable. So users can make any day two changes to their security services and or even add or remove security services on existing um, share networks. And we're trying to make the metadata APIs consistent across all user facing resources in uh, Manila. 
And of course, we'll continue to keep the momentum on OpenStack client, OpenStack SDK. And um, we, 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 as I said before, we have uh, several new contributors um, in the in the form of students uh, that are that are looking to uh, you know get involved with OpenStack or open source, and uh, we're helping them help us land this uh, important piece. And we're also looking to continue uh, making UI improvements uh, where we're going to be ca doing a version catch up with the Manila API. And in the CSI drivers, uh, we're looking to add support to share resize and also try to re-architect re the, the driver to be a multi-protocol driver. Uh, so that way it makes things easier for data management and for observability and other concerns. So we have a lot to accomplish in terms of features and bug fixes. And so we'd greatly benefit from your help. So should you be interested to contribute, we'd love to have help in several areas, uh, code, maintainership, and documentation. We enjoy bringing new contributors on board and we, we're changing some of the process to make it easier to become a core, core reviewer. So please get in touch with us if you're interested. Alongside, there are a couple of useful links here for unfinished work that's important to the project team. So if you're willing to help, these are great places to start. That said, thank you so much for listening. I highly appreciate your contributions, help, and support in keeping us motivated and for making Manila better with each release. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so are there any questions around the Manila updates for the Victoria and Wallaby cycles? All right, everyone's quiet today. So with that, we're going to head to Masakari. Hello, everyone. This is Radoslav Pijic speaking for the Masakari project. Uh, I'm going to show you some basic information about the Masakari project and also what has happened in the last release and what we are planning for the next release. For the starters, what does Masakari do? Masakari is delivering high availability for instances in an OpenStack cloud. It is implemented in terms of notifications and recovery workflows. Notifications are delivered by monitors, which may in turn rely on external sources of truth, like Pacemaker. So now for a little background about the Masakari project. It was founded during the Rocky release of OpenStack. It was previously developed by NTT and open sourced by them. We had 25 contributors in the Victoria cycle, and we hope to have more during the Wallaby cycle. So why Masakari in the first place? Cloud workloads are not always cloud native, and resilience for gas applications may need high availability solutions such as Masakari. This brings the OpenStack platform closer to solutions like Overt or Proxmox, where you get the HA functionality almost out of the box. Similarly, if you don't control what is running in your cloud and you want to meet your SLAs, you might want to use Massacre to deliver high availability for your customers. Massacre is a simple project in terms of the OpenStack ecosystem it has only two dependencies, Keystone for authentication and Nova for the virtual machine side. But it gets a little bit more convoluted when we look at the inside of Massacre. So from a very high level, uh, we can see core clients and monitors making up the Massacre project. In the core, we can see API which is contacted by users and monitors equally. And API allows you to configure your segments and also to receive notifications, usually from the monitors, but users can also send notifications to it. And there's also the engine, which is the actual workhorse of Massacre. It acts upon the notifications, so it runs those recovery workflows I've been talking about. And the other part being clients. Uh, it's typical like in the other OpenStack projects. It's centered around the OpenStack client, the OpenStack SDK, and also with the standalone interface. 
as well as a plugin for the dashboard, so Horizon. And the last but not least, monitors, uh, the interesting part uh, for the detection of the actual failures. So there are four kinds of monitors at the moment. The first kind is instance monitor. It's compatible with Livert. Uh, it has been tested with QMU and QMU plus KVM. Uh, it can probably work with other backends of Livert, but it hasn't been tested yet. Uh, there's also the host monitor, so it's integrated with Pacemaker and it detects host failures. There's also the process monitor, it monitors the Nova Compute process. And the last one is the introspection of instances monitor, uh, which is compatible only with Libvirt with QMU and KVM, optionally. Uh, and it does uh, look into the instances uh, to check whether the health status uh, is correct. We finished the Victoria cycle with only one feature. Uh, which is a separation of host and instance level protection tagging. Uh, so basically before that feature, uh, Massacre treated equally whether there was a host or an instance failure. Uh, you couldn't, as a user, differentiate between instances that are going to be protected against instance failure and those protected against host failure. And now it is possible But for the Wallaby release, we've got a bunch of ideas about what to implement in Massacre. For summary of those, please visit the link at the top of this slide. And I will now talk through the three, I guess, most important uh, ones from the summary. Uh, so the first one being the evaluation of pacemaker alternatives, console etcd. Or perhaps the alternative is not the best word in general because pacemaker, console, and etcd are very different things. But Massacre uses pacemaker for the detection of host failures. And pacemaker actually has its limitations. Uh, well, the most basic limitation is that uh, if you are running CoreSync uh, and if you don't want to run pacemaker remote functionalities, then you are limited to only 16 nodes. And that's usually too few uh, for a typical cloud. Uh, with pacemaker, it can be worked around it by using remotes. But the problem with remotes is that they work differently to the basic processing stack. And they add additional complexity to the pacemaker cluster. So Masakari is looking forward to evaluating alternatives in the form of console and etcd, which are also able to be used as, keep, as host state uh, tracking solutions. Another similar and also related topic to that is moving fencing and host status verification closer to Masakari. So for now, Masakari is kind of blind it completely relies on Pacemaker to do its job correctly, and Masakari is unable to verify whether Pacemaker is configured correctly and whether it acted correctly in that particular case. And if that isn't true, if fencing didn't happen, there may, there may be various issues in real operations, like for example, if the original host is actually still running, connected to the storage array, you might get broken volumes. And what we want to do is we want to evaluate how Ironic could help Masakari here, uh, because basically we need functionalities related to controlling a bunch of bare metal hosts. And finally, for an unrelated feature, uh, restoring the original state. Uh, so the state before Masakari took its actions. And for now, when Masakari runs its recovery workflows, then it's done. And it's not really possible for the user to revert what has happened. So all the evacuations that were done, were done. And that's it. But from time to time, uh, when you 
restore the hardware to its original glory, you might want to restore the instances that were running there previously without having to rely on uh, external projects like, for example, Watcher to rebalance your uh, cluster again. And Mathecary needs your help. So join us on IOC on the OpenStack Mathecary channel at Freenode. Attend our every two weeks meeting on IOC. I try to not say bi weekly because bi weekly may mean twice a week. Propose and discuss features and enhancements, report and trash bugs on Launchpad, review changes, contribute a blueprint and or a spec, contribute code, fix a feature. We welcome any kind of help. Make our Patreon slash logo slash hero slash San Bernard happy. And thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. All right. Are there any questions around the Masakari updates? All right, we'll continue. The next one is Neutron. Hi, everyone. I'm Savek, and I'm Neutron PTL since a uh, few cycles. I started serving as PTL uh, for Neutron in Uzuri, and I continue that through Victoria and now in Wallaby. I work for Red Hat, and uh, you can catch me on IRC mostly on OpenStack Neutron channel uh, at Freenode, if you need anything related to Neutron. Uh, today I wanted to, to, to show you um, some updates about what Neutron team achieved in the Victoria cycle. So let's start with uh, some general statistics uh, based on Stackalytics first. So Neutron uh, team matched almost 600 patches to the Neutron and Neutron Stadium project during Victoria cycle. We completed five blueprints, um, closed, we closed all, almost 170 bugs, and there was more than 100 individual contributors who sent at least one patch to the Neutron uh, project in this last cycle. So as you can see, the project seems to be pretty healthy and stable. We have a bunch of contributors. We are doing a lot of work every, every, uh, every release. And now let's talk a bit about new features which we introduced in Victoria. Uh, so first of all, we added support for metadata over IPv6. Neutron is first project, as far as I know, which provides metadata service over IPv6 address. We are using a link local IPv6 address for that. It is equivalent of the IPv4 address, which every one of you probably knows, 169.254. 169.254 um, now you can uh, uh, you can get metadata from metadata service in the IPv6 only networks uh, using this new link local IP address as it is link local IP address you have to specify uh, give a interface name in the URL uh, when doing uh, requests but other than that Everything else should work in exactly the same way like in IPv4 world. And you, could, you should be able to get metadata from metadata service. Uh, one thing which you should be aware of is that uh, Cloudini, for example, as far as I know, don't support uh, metadata over IPv6 yet. So. Cloud Init will not work with IPv6 only networks uh, for now, but if you have some own scripts or if you want to add uh, some your own, uh, I think it's called data provider in, IP, in Cloud Init, you can do that and you can use IPv6 um, 
to get metadata. Uh, next thing which we introduced in this release is support for flat networks in the DVR distributed uh, routers. Uh, previously, you could only attach to the DVR routers uh, VLAN or tunnel-based networks, like VXLAN or GRE networks. Uh, if you attach flat network to the DVR router, uh, different strange things could happen, like, for example, duplicate packets sent through the uh, interfaces on this network and things like that. Uh, some more info about that is uh, in the uh, is uh, available in the related bug report, which is uh, linked on this slide. Uh, another features which I want to highlight here is uh, are some OVN related uh, things. Basically, in Uzu Recycle, we merged OVN backend and OVN driver from uh, to the Neutron core repository. So, OVN became uh, one of the in-tree driver, neutron drivers, instead of being a separate stadium project. But we know that OVN has got some parity gaps, feature parity gaps between uh, comparing to ML2 OVS, and we wanted to, uh, we are working hard to close those gaps every cycle. And in, in Victoria, we, uh, we added support for floating AP port forwarding and for router availability zones in the OVN driver. So basically you can use port forwarding with OVN backend now. And you can, and OVN driver will also uh, now read availability zone hints from your router and will schedule router ports accordingly to the given uh, availability zones. We also added couple of new config options, which may be um, pretty important to know from operator's point of view. First of such options is keep alive the use no contract. This one is important if uh, you are using keep alive the older than 2.0, because in such version, keep alive the don't know about no, con no track option uh, in config file and will complain if Neutron will add such option to, to the KeepAlive config file. Uh, default value of this option is true because in the newest uh, distribution, distributions like Ubuntu uh, 20.04 or CentOS 8, uh, there is already KeepAlive 2.0 and uh, that should work fine. But if you are using some older distro or uh, you have your own older Kipal ID, then it uh, may be worth to, uh, it may be required to, to change this value to false. Another new config option is HTTP retries, which is a neutral server uh, config option, and it basically says that how many times Neutron uh, Nova or ironic client used by Neutron, um, how many times it should uh, retry API requests which are sent from Neutron to Nova, for example, with uh, notification that port is provisioned or things like that. By default, we are, uh, we are retrying three times in case of some network outage of, or some something some some other issue networking issue during the first uh, request uh, sent to Nova, but you can of course change this uh, to some other value. Other smaller improvements uh, which we which we added in in the Victoria cycle are, for example, uh, that all neutron agent processes now uh, has got the same format of the process name like Neutron Server Workers, so it will be visible as Neutron Agent name, like Neutron DHCP Agent or Neutron L3 Agent, and then in parentheses there will be full original process name, including interpreter, like user bin Python, 
and uh, the, the rest of the process name, which you already know. This usually is not really very important for, for users, but if you have any custom scripts or tools, which, uh, which for example, rely on output from PS uh, command, then you may need to update your tools accordingly to, to this change. Other, uh, from other things, I can also mention that port DNS assignment now reflects uh, DNS domain defined in the network or sent by user in the API, uh, through the API. Uh, previously, it was always only based on the DNS domain value specified in the Neutron config file. Now it can be specified by API. And last but not least, uh, we also changed uh, terminology used uh, in our code base. Uh, for example, we changed words like master, slave to primary and backup. This is mostly internal change in Neutron code, not really very visible for, for users, but still I think it's important to, to mention that we did uh, change like that in last cycle. And that's all updates about Neutron project uh, in the Victoria cycle. Thank you and goodbye. All right, I know we're running close on time or we're about to run over on time, but we do still have two more short updates. Um, so are there any questions around Neutron for this cycle? Awesome, then we're gonna go right into telemetry and then we'll have a short update from Nova at the end. Hello and welcome to the OpenStack telemetry project overview and update for the Wallaby cycle. My name is Matthias Runge. If you don't know me, I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat and I have been around with OpenStack since the Grizzly cycle. I've been recently elected as PTL for telemetry and I am the, the successor of Rong, who is currently serving as PTL for the projects Murano and for Solom. So what does telemetry do? Telemetry is used for gathering metrics and events. It is listening on the message bus and captures events like a VM was spawned, a network was created, or a volume has been deleted. It is also using the OpenStack API to pull data out of the services to collect information about usage, memory consumption on a tenant basis. Combined with the service AODH or A, and together with heat, it provides an auto scaling service, for example, to scale up or scale down resources. OpenStack telemetry was probably founded during the Grizzly cycle, and it started with only Silometer, which was later split into separate components during the Metaka cycle. Actually, I couldn't find accurate data about this, and please correct me if I'm wrong here. Over the past cycle, we had about 20 different contributors. While this number sounds pretty great and sane, I would love to encourage you all to contribute more because telemetry is an important part of OpenStack, as we see from the latest survey numbers. Telemetry is used in 45% of production environments is being tested in 8% of deployments and another 14% are considering to use it. Since there are a lot of different names around and under the telemetry umbrella, I have an architecture overview here where you can see Silometer is collecting data. Events are being sent to Panko, metrics to Noki and A is the alarming component. It is repeatedly pulling metrics from the Noki API, compares the results with it, its rules and would issue a call to heat if an alarm is triggered. The most notable feature over the past cycle or past few cycles is the dynamic pulse subsystem. The idea here is to create or update pulses on the fly 
which wasn't possible before. Pollsters are being used to pull metric, um, metrics out via the OpenStack API. For the future, we have two major changes in planning. You, have may, you ha, may have seen discussions around Noki and Noki being supported or not, Noki being scalable or not, et cetera, et cetera. Personally, I would like to solve this rather sooner than later. There has been discussion around getting Noki back under the OpenStack umbrella. To be honest, I'm not sure what the that would solve compared to Noki being independent. At least the discussion was uh, about that was um, uncontroversial without a clear outcome. Unfortunately, Heat also stopped testing against Silometer and Noki because it caused them too many issues. For the future, I would like to encourage you to contribute to this lovely project with that. I'm turning to my last slide and I would like to uh, your feedback, hear your pain points or see use cases. And finally, if you didn't participate in the survey yet, please consider to do so. Thank you. Awesome. And unfortunately this presenter wasn't able to join today, but feel free to reach out to them um on irc but i'm gonna actually stop sharing so we can get that last presentation up i think it's only two minutes for the nova piece so i'm gonna stop and then i think helena is gonna share her screen so we can get the nova update going here we go Well, and I don't think the sound is coming through. Welcome everyone. My name is Balash Gibizer, and I am here to give you an update about what the Nova team delivered in the Victoria cycle. But first, a short recap of what, what Nova is. Nova is the main computing project in the OpenStack. It implements creating virtual servers and managing the life cycle of those servers. In the Victoria cycle, we had 75 individual contributors. We merged around 370 commits and implemented nine blueprints. On the next slide, I will highlight the main changes of the cycle. First, we continued supporting mixing physical and virtual CPUs. In Ussuri, we added support for mixing them on the same hypervisor. Now in Victoria, you can mix them even in the same NOAA server. The next item is actually two features both targeting self-based glance configurations. The Nova Compute service now improved to use a direct and therefore fast image cloning method from Ceph. Also, Nova now handles glance multi-store configuration properly during image download. We also added support for virtual trusted platform module devices. In Victoria, you can request such device to be added to your server via flavor extra spec or image metadata. For a long time, Nova supported attaching and detaching neutron ports to running servers, but attaching a port that is backed by an SRIOV device was not supported. In Victoria, we now support such attach. We continued extending the support for cyborg accelerator devices. Now you can rebuild and evacuate servers using accelerators. Also, we are planning to support even more lifecycle operations in the next release. In Victoria, deployers can end up provide their configuration file to the Nova Compute service to define custom resources. These resources will be reported by Nova to placement, and these resources can be requested from your VM via flavor extra spec. Nova will manage the resource allocation for such resources. Last, I have to mention some deprecations and code removals. The Libvia driver supports multiple hypervisor backends, but the XEN, UML, and LXC backends are unmaintained. Now we decided to deprecate these backends. This also means that removal of these backends are expected in the coming, coming cycles. The standalone Senopi driver was, al was also deprecated a couple of cycles ago, and in Victoria we deleted the code for the driver. 
That was all I wanted to highlight from Nova perspective. If you have questions, then reach out to the Nova team on IRC. Thank you for joining. Awesome. So those are our OpenStack project updates um, for the Victoria and Wallaby cycles. If you're a PTL or a core contributor for a project that wasn't shown, there's still time um, because all of these videos will be posted in the project navigator. So people who are trying to learn more about the project can see what the latest updates are and learn more about the project and get involved. And um, with that, are there any remaining questions or um, feedback before we close the community meeting today? Awesome. Well, we'll be sharing the recording and the slides on the mailing list this afternoon. And like I mentioned this morning on the mailing list, um, I'm going to circle back with the Open Dev team on their Jitsi instance. So if there's any additional feedback on that, um, again, my name is Allison Price. My email is allison at openstack.org. Please reach out to me. I definitely want to evolve this community community meeting to what makes sense for the community. Um, so any feedback is welcome. Um, we just want to make sure it's what everyone wants to tune into and hear. So thanks for joining and we'll see you out in the community. Bye everyone. Thank you.